So in this uh, test pit, uh, about 120 feet from the cabin, and probably about um, 180 feet from the lake, uh, I've dug a test pit roughly just under six feet. And I'm gonna take you through the areas here of the soil horizons. Up here, we're gonna have all the uh, forest litter. So we're gonna have various root structures, um, a lot of leaves, a lot of, a, lot of, a lot of organics that sort of just rot away over the years. As we go down a little bit further, we're reaching a horizon where we've, we've got a sandy loam type of texture. It's neither gritty nor smooth. And when we wet it, uh, the ribbon breaks, you know, uh, less, less than an inch. So which suggests a uh, sandy loam characteristic. As we go down a little bit further, we're gonna see various modeling spots. So you see these little gray areas and mixed with some uh, rust spots like that. So as we go through this soil horizon, we, we quickly see again all this graying modeling. What that suggests is that the water table lifts to this particular area here and then drops seasonally. And so with our test bed, you can clearly see that we've got a high water table right at about our four and a half foot mark. So four and a half feet deep, we're uh, already mid-June and we still have a high water table here down four and a half feet. So probably a couple months ago, we were reaching a high water table roughly around this area. Like this horizon is still fairly moist, but it's dried out as it goes down. So this horizon here, down below this modeling horizon, we have a very wet type of sandy loam. And it's still a very similar soil characteristic all the way through, but down here we have a lot more saturation, which means there's always a lot of water hovering around this saturated area. As you can clearly see, we have a substantial amount of water in our test pit, close to a foot. So when we design this, of course, we're not going to be able to do a conventional gravity system because conventional gravity systems, we need close to two feet uh, for pipe dispersal where our infiltrative surface will be. And if you clearly see, our rust spots start immediately just after the two foot level. So what do we do in this case? Well, we're going to have to build a, construct a constructed vertical separation from roughly one foot down to another couple of feet up above. So it'll be an above septic system that we're gonna require here. And that is usually with uh, specified sand, a mound sand that we're gonna use. And what that does is clear uh, the pathogens prior to it reaching this more restrictive area right here. So we have to consider this a restrictive zone because our high water table seasonally comes roughly to that point right there. Now this is the secondary test pit, uh, 32 meters north of the first test pit. And we're gonna see quite similar characteristics to the first test pit. Now, as we go down, you can see uh, these varying roots. Uh, this is slightly more of a gray in this type of horizon, uh, but you're gonna see some rusting, some modeling little light gray spots in there. But uh, one uh, telling factor is you look at these roots. These roots are quite dead on the ends and quite white. This definitely signifies that it's been in a high water situation. On this particular side as well, you're gonna see these roots. You see how they're quite dead on the ends? Little white spots on the root systems. This signifies that it's been in a high water. So you look throughout, you see these varying rust spots everywhere. Signifies that this water table here rises seasonally, comes up through this root system, kind of kills the ends of these roots, and it leaves us evidence to suggest that we have a high water table 
that comes roughly a foot below the surface. And as you can see, as we chop this horizon, you can see further modeling a little bit uh, easier. And you can see, if you look carefully, the uh, rust spots. So you'll note a lot of modeling going on, a lot of rust spots. It's a little more than a foot, you know, roughly close to 40 centimeters. We're starting to get this horizon which is uh, getting restricted because of the high water seasonally. So if our septic system comes in through here and reaches a high water situation, it's not going to be very effective. So what we have to do is we certainly have to build a uh, sand layer on top of the uh, on top of the soil, making a constructed above grade uh, sand mound system. We're just offloading the uh, two compartment 800 gallon septic tank. It's going to go into our excavation that we just did here. We got our septic tank in the place, everything's sitting quite nicely. We're going to add some conceal to it so that we can seal our lid to the top of it. Again, we were here uh, just a couple weeks ago uh, doing the, the testing because of the lake there. We were reaching uh, some high water levels right around the uh, 35 centimeter mark. So if you recall, uh, we were noticing some uh, modeling and some resting spots on the soils. So we've uh, come up to the cabin area where we're a little bit higher up on the elevation. So we're not getting the kind of uh, high water table that we were where we were testing. Now we're just adding the pump chamber. tank we're standing on. There's our high water table. Guy yeah. Now we got our tank and pump chamber in place. Perfect timing. The water is uh, raising a little bit, so we're going to quickly back for this. Settle the tanks down. It's going to lift the lid to put some pond seal. Seal the lid in place. So today we're on our second day of the sand mount installation. Yesterday the conditions were a little bit wet, made for it a little bit of a slippery uh, septic tank installation and the uh, pump chamber as well. Um, today it's pretty dry, uh, conditions are pretty good. And uh, so today we're gonna be working on the uh, sand mount itself. So we're gonna be spreading some sand. First we're gonna lay out the, uh, the area where we're gonna put the sand and that's, uh, sort of this area right here that we targeted. It's a little bit of a flatter area 
and right now I'm just uh, scarifying the um, the top of the soil with the uh, machine. So as you can see, I sort of roughed the uh, surface up a little bit. And what this does is just make a, a better intrusion for the uh, the sand to go into the natural soil. And once the effluent distributes, it's a nice transition right down to the soil without uh, sort of having a glide or a, or a slippery section underneath the, uh, the the sand itself. So that way it'll penetrate the, uh, the soils quite a bit better. So today, um, we're just gonna line this up and uh, start spraying the sand. So we've got our uh, basal area identified. All that organic material above, it's good stuff. We need to leave that in place. We don't wanna create any uh, sort of void areas. So now we're just gonna lay our sand layer on top of this. We're just dumping some more sand for the sand mound. As you can see, the uh, pins over there, we want to make sure that the truck is never over top of the actual uh, basal area that we're doing our uh, sand mound in. It creates a lot of uh, undulation and, and uh, settling, uh, compressing of the soil, and we certainly don't want that when we're distributing the wastewater. Right now we're just piling the sand to the height that uh, we require. We're just uh, continuing our construction of the sand mound here. We still have to rake this out thoroughly, but right now we're just uh, constructing the height of it and then adjusting as we go. So now that we've basically formed our sand mound here, we're gonna add a layer of uh, a, rock, a rock bed to it. So probably about uh, six inches of rock bed and then we're gonna place our laterals. So our force main is coming right out through the middle of our sand mound area here so that we have drain back into the uh, pump chamber down closer to the cabin area. So leading back to our septic tank area, we've got the tie-in to the home. A clean out there leading into our 800 gallon concrete septic tank then we're leading into our pump chamber and you put a little bit of water in there to do a field test in a little while and that pump tank then uh, goes through a force main delivers it right up to our mound area We've got yeah, our lateral got our sections stone on top place of our now. mound. We're just assembling our piping network. Here we have these uh, valve boxes for sure fittings here. And all that sure does is basically properly. have our clean out ports in there. So in this particular case, we're putting all our uh, orifices facing down. This is just uh, for potential uh, freezing issues. That way there's complete drain back of all the fluid going in through the laterals. Here's our manifold section. And carries on down the line. So now what we're gonna do is a score test just before we uh, put some rock cover over this and then uh, put some backfill with some pit run. We wanna make sure we have the top soil that's nicely aerated. We don't want anything uh, that's clay based that's gonna cut off the air supply to our mound area here. So in our manifold part, we've got these uh, swing valves or ball valves. And what that does is just make um, maintenance to each of the laterals just a lot quicker, a lot easier. We have access to a clean out there as well down the force main. And since the force main is coming straight up, we have another clean out for the force main going to the septic tank. And then of course our ends are for each lateral section clean out as well. 
So what we're going to do now is just perform a quick uh, lateral flush, make sure there's no contaminants in the piping. And that should suffice. We're just doing our squirt test. Just pressurizing everything. Everything's displacing quite nicely. Now we can only tell the ends there, we have a little bit of adjusting to do. Because everything is pointed downwards, we only uh, have the end pieces to do our squirt test. And what we did was we put uh, a hole in the caps to sort of guide us to a proper height. So now we've made our adjustments, just tweaking out our valve area there. So now we should have a uniform distribution. Everything's looking pretty good. So now that we've added some rock cover, I'm just gonna go back and throw the um, fabric on there. After we're done that, we can throw on some topsoil and uh, slope this mound a little bit. Basically, this is our completed sand mount. So what we did was just put some uh, pit run, just extra materials over top, just whatever we can find displaced, something that's sandy, airy. And just to go with the topography and to protect the sand mount, we just added some of these large boulders. There's a lot of RVing uh, back and forth through this roadway here, so we want to make sure that we're protecting the sand mound. And that's our completed sand mound.